to another episode of Paint Along with the Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week it is dreary, and many of us are dreaming of packing our bags and hopping a flight to a far off destination, perhaps something Mediterranean, tropical. Um, so we're going to do a really fun stack of suitcases painting today called Time to Travel. Uh, and we're going to travel in our imaginations if we can't travel in real life to those destinations. Uh, so I have my four standard brushes for this class that I use in most of my classes. So I have a large square wash brush a medium-sized pointed brush, and two small detail brushes. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have to start with for today for the background step, I have some ultramarine blue, some black, just a little bit, uh, a fair amount of white, fair amount of burnt sienna type warm brown, and just a little bit of cadmium yellow. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so we're gonna grab our largest brush here for our background step. And I'm going to start by creating a horizon line so that I can sort of separate my painting out into different parts. And I'm going to start with a very light beige with just a little bit of brown and some white, a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm going to come up about a third of the way, and I'm going to try to do as straight of a line as I can going across like so. Now from this line, everything below it is going to be our carpet, uh, and then above here is going to be our wall. So my imagination was that my suitcases are packed and stacked and I have my camera ready to go and I've taken a photo perhaps with another camera <laughs> of my other camera uh, of the stack of suitcases against the wall sort of inside. Um, so I'm thinking this is going to be here like a brown carpet and the top part I'm going to do with a light blue but this can be any color that you like. This is going to be your wall color. All right, so my walls are white, but uh, it's a rental. <laughs> so I would probably paint my walls blue. And also I'm liking the contrast of the blue with the beige. So you get to be an interior decorator a little bit today and decide what color your walls are gonna be. And I'm just gonna start with this light blue I don't want to go completely solid with it. So I'm leaving a little bit of streakiness and just starting to get that color on. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white as well. And I think also a little bit of gray. Sneak that over here. A little too light, like a medium to light gray. Okay, and just a few streaks of that. Not going too crazy. I think having white walls is not so bad because I put paintings all over and art. And I sort of like the contrast of the white wall with all the bright colorful art that I have up among other things, mirrors, but today I think it would be boring to just do a white wall. So I'm mixing it up with some blue and gray. And a little bit blended there. I'm getting almost like a watercolor look. I really like that. Okay, we're having fun with textures getting things a little bit stylized. And remember with acrylic paint, it's always about layering. 
meaning you can always sort of correct things, add to things. So if you need to, for instance, add a little bit more gray or blue anywhere or white, you can do that right on top of the other paint. So for instance, if I wanted to grab a little bit of white, lighten that up right there, kind of play around here with the colors and just create a nice little wall effect. Okay, looking very cute, I like it. I'm going to go ahead and move into the lower part now. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm going to mix up a nice big batch of beige with my warm brown, a tiny bit of yellow, and a fair amount of white. Like a sandy beach color. See, again, my mind is at the beach. But today we're going to do some easy, basic carpet texture. And I'm just going to move my brush all around until I get to my top line. It's a little dark. And bring that color right up to the top there. But we do want all the brush strokes within this bottom part to be consistent. Every brush stroke matters. Remember that. It's all some of its parts. Okay, so bring that right up there and then bring a little bit of textured brush stroke right up to it. Okay, all consistent. And a little bit of texture down here with our white and maybe even a little bit with more neutrally brown with some black added. Perfect. Throughout just a little bit here and there. Very nice, looking good. All right, that looks good for a background. Let's go ahead now and step away and we'll let this layer dry and we'll come back and add our adorable suitcases. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background and all fresh rainbow colors here on my piece of palette paper. So I have black and white, ultramarine blue, some phthalo green, burnt sienna, as well as red, orange, and yellow, just a little bit of each. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush for this next part. And this is an, is an important one. This is going to be our suitcases. This is gonna take up the majority of our canvas here. I don't wanna to go too big though, because I want to eyeball here, how am I fitting three shapes on top of each other? Okay, so, and then we also wanna think what color do we want our suitcases to be? And I'm going to do probably a blue and brown suitcase for my base suitcase here. But I think I'm gonna start with my white just because it's a little easier to cover, just in case. So I'm going to go probably about halfway through my uh, light brown section here. And I'm going to create my first suitcase. I think I'll go a little bit higher up than my horizon line here. Ever so slightly above. And then all the way over to meet the other side. And I'm just eyeballing here to try to center it-ish. A little bit bigger over on this side. It's okay though. It's a fun 
stylized kind of painting today. And then right on top of uh, that first rectangle, we're just gonna keep it simple with another rectangle, curving the edges slightly and bending smaller. So that's our little secondary, maybe this is a checked bag and a carry-on. Checked bag, carry-on. <laughs> and then our camera on top, it's a good size camera. I always need a good size camera when I travel, um, but not as big as the suitcase. Okay, so we're going maybe like a third of the length here, maybe a little bit more for this top rectangle, which is going to be our adorable camera. All right, those shapes are looking good. Going to grab, I think, a bigger brush here. And now we gotta decide on those colors. So this base suitcase, I'm going to do in colors that I actually have a really cute suitcase like, which it's a dark blue. And then with brown leather accents. And then the top suitcase, I'm gonna do teal because you guys know how I love teal my favorite color, that turquoisey green blue. Okay, and I'm just going to fill in this whole bottom rectangle with my dark blue or with whatever color you want to paint your suitcase. Customizable. A little bit of water, a little bit of white, but again, whatever color you like, just getting these base shapes and base colors sketched out and filled in. That's the name of the game at this point. Okay, and nice solid, don't wanna to see too much background Try to get plenty of paint on there. If you need a second coat, that's okay. You can always put a second coat of paint on if you're seeing through to the background, if you ever need to. All right, looking good. Get my blue all filled in and all the way covering those white sketch lines. And again, I wanna go as flat and straight of a line as I can, parallel to that horizon line. Okay, which is parallel to the bottom of the canvas. Just eyeballing it. You can always use rulers if you want to. I'm more of an artist than a mathematician, so I tend to stay away from them unless I really need them, but that was probably a little bit of laziness on my part. So please uh, do use a ruler if you feel that that will aid you, but I also sort of like the whimsical style of things when I freehand them, so. To each their own. All right, going to just rinse my brush and use that same brush to come in with my next chosen suitcase color, main color. Here we'll have accent colors on both suitcases. And I'm going to fill this one in with my favorite color, light, gorgeous, turquoise, teal, like beautiful Mediterranean or tropical lines. I love to travel. It's been a little while since I've had a good trip in. I've moved a lot in the last couple of years, so moved instead of traveled. But now I'm a little more settled in and ready to pack my bags and go visit the beach again. Live up in the mountains now, which I love too. I like both. 
Let me know in the comments if you're a beach person or a mountain person or a different type. I want to know. And I want to know where your favorite destinations are to travel to as well. What's your next trip planned? Okay. And straight inch lines. Very good. I think I'm going to downgrade brush sizes now to a smaller brush for my top rectangle, which I'm going to just very simply fill in with a medium gray. Okay, and as we fill this in, I'm going to add another little shape here. So let's just fill in the rectangle first. with medium gray, very pretty. And every sketch line covered. I'm also going to do a little, uh, I'm not sure what the name of this shape is, but it's like a rectangle. It's a parallelogram, but the sides are on diagonal angles. All right, and that's going to be like right over where our lens is for our camera. But we're going to let this layer dry as well so that we can come back and add those final details on top of this last layer. All right, I'll see everyone in another couple minutes. Let's just step away and let this dry a little bit as well. Okay. All right, welcome back. We have a mostly dry mid layer here and ready for our final details. Didn't want my brown to blend with my blue in a kind of grayish way, so I really wanted to let that layer dry for just a second. But now I'm gonna come in with this brown and I'm going to work down on the bottom one first again. And my first Step will be sort of like these leather protectors. I like to trim along the side of the suitcase. And we'll do that just with this sort of medium brown, just brown with a tiny pinch of white. Okay, just like so, super cute. And come on over to the other side. And just doing the same thing, trying to get good coverage there and not see the blue or your background, although the background is brown, so it's pretty easy to cover. All these little details are what really make the painting. Now I'm going to go about a third of the way down and I'm going to take a horizontal line with that brown all the way across. That's like the top lid there. Separating the two parts. And just going back over that a little bit and getting it nice and solid. Okay, looking very cute. And again, you can customize these colors, of course, if you'd like. I like the blue and brown look together. Brown is similar to orange, which is the opposite of blue. So those are what's called complementary colors. If you'd like to learn more about color theory, I do have a course on Skillshare. 
and there's a link below where you can check it out. It's in the description box. And it will take you to my page. And if you sign up, you can get a free month going through that link. So you can check out that course for free. And then also other stuff on Skillshare. All right, rinsing my brush. A little bit of a darker green is going to be my accent color for my gorgeous teal. And I'm just gonna take that same color and add a little bit of green to it so that it's just a little bit more vibrant, a little darker. And I'm going to do essentially the same thing. My top carry-on, I have a little bit more curved of a suitcase shape. See the brown and the blue look so cute together. Okay, and same idea though, we're gonna have that line of separation here horizontally, all the way across. Super cute. Okay, and then up in our camera, to rinse my brush and I'm going to grab some blue, a little bit of white and a little bit of black, so like a grayish blue. And I'm going to use my grayish blue here to create the lens. And the lens is just going to be a circle right underneath that top shape here where the camera gets thicker. There's more gadgets in there. And real quick, I'm just going to grab a little tiny bit of white on my brush and I'm going to do two little brush strokes on either side to get a little bit of that lens reflection sparkle there. Super cute. Okay, and a little bit of black to go around my lens. Just like so. And then we have our cute little camera lens. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take that black since it's on my brush and do a quick outline of my little camera shape. Just the outside edges here. Okay, looking good. Starting to look a little bit camera-like. Just a quick little outline. And with that black, I'm also going to add a little button. Just like a tiny little brush stroke right on top there. Looking good, coming together. And let's grab a little bit of a lighter gray. And with that color, we're gonna do our little viewfinder. This is going to be a rectangle right underneath that button. And then I'm gonna take some white. And I'm gonna do two quick little stripes on either side just to decorate my camera with a really cute vintage camera that I don't have, fantasy camera. And then a little dot, white dot for the flash button over there. Oh my gosh, so cute. It just comes together like that. And then rinsed my brush really quick. I'm gonna come in with just a little bit of black to outline the white. This is again one of my sort of cartoon illustrator style paintings where I am just outlining everything with black. <laughs> so if you don't want to outline things with black, you don't have to. It does look a little bit more realistic if you don't. 
but I like the way black looks on things. And I'm just gonna do a quick outline of my little viewfinder as well. And our camera's looking really cute. Last little line here is going to be the one connecting it to the top of our green suitcase. All right, moving right along. I think we're gonna work our way from the top down here on top of these layers. All right, now working on our adorable little teal carry-on. Going to add some silver buckles. So we're just gonna take a little bit of a medium gray here on my still second to smallest detail brush. A little bit lighter. And we're going to do sort of triangular shaped, but flat on the bottom. So again, rectangles shaped like so or the clasps on either side, and I'm trying to eyeball them at the same point here on either side, get them spaced out properly. And we can just go ahead and fill that in with the gray, right as we sketch it in. Very cute, love that. Since we have that gray on our brush, let's go ahead and add some clasps down on our bottom one as well. Just like so on either side. And I'm gonna mix it up and make these slightly different shaped. So these are more oval. And then I'm going to add a more triangular shape on this side. So it's almost like a key, keyhole shape. Okay. Cute, coming along. And then let's add our handles. I'm going to just take my dark green color. A little bit of water, always. And I'm gonna just place that handle here right along the bottom. And then slightly up here a little bit. Rectangular shape like so. And then the handle is going to be attached with little silver clasps as well. So we can actually even use our smallest detail brush for this since it's a really tiny step. And I'm just gonna do two little tiny clasps on either side. For small details like this, I want to remind anyone that's using a smart device that you can zoom in. All right, so little tiny clasps there. Let's grab a little bit of black and we're gonna start outlining all of those shapes that we just added. So I almost have like a little bow shape there. And I'm using my tiniest small brush now for these tiny little details and teeny tiny little outlining. If you want things to go a little bit quicker though, you can always use the slightly larger small brush, which I like to use as well. Okay, and then we're just outlining that handle shape, curving what is the top of the handle a little bit. So cute. All right, and let's do a teeny little highlight here in our handle before moving on. Just have a light green again, and I'm just going to take a little swipe there through the handle just for another little added element of depth. All right, I think I'm gonna grab now my second to smallest brush again to outline my teal case. It's okay if it's a little bit of a rough outline. 
kind of adds to that painterly look. Okay, and just going on the outside edge here. And this is a good opportunity to finesse that shape if you need to. And I'm gonna go right along the bottom. You wanna come up into the teal suitcase here rather than bringing that shadow down into the one beneath it. So that it doesn't look like it's indenting the bottom suitcase. Okay, looking really good. Still just working with black here. I'm going to do an outline of my little fine details here. Like so. And a quick outline of my buckles. Working with the paints today like an illustrator would. Coming back in with the black. If you wanted to experiment with paint pens, I feel like that would work and it might give you a little bit more control with outlining work like this if you struggle with it. I almost prefer to do outlining work like this with a brush because holding a brush I find is easier on my hand than holding a pen or a pencil. Look at how cute that looks. Love it. All right, let's take a little tiny bit of light gray for a highlight in our buckles. That was a little bit too bright, but it's still pretty cute. You can always tone things down a little bit if you need to. A little bit of that medium gray color again. All right, that looks really cute. All we need to do is add our stickers and I'm going to just come in here with white first and I'm gonna create a rectangle here in this corner and it's going to come up and off the edge there. Look, it's coming around to the top part of the suitcase as well. Very cute. And then I'm going to grab a gray color. Lots of little fine details today. Let's add a pinch of blue into our gray too. And I'm going to do a circle over here for a different type of sticker. Now I'm customizing my suitcase like I would in my real life. So I'm going to do a peace sign and I'm going to do a New Mexico sticker. But you really can do any kind of stickers that you like that represent you. And I'm going to let those base colors for the stickers dry for just a minute so that we can move on and we'll come back uh, in a little bit once it's a little bit drier so that we can add our final details there. But let's go ahead and work again on our gorgeous bottom suitcase. So I'm just going to start by doing an outline along the outside edge, just because that's where I feel like going. But it's going to be very similar steps here to the one above it. Okay, so we're gonna need to add a handle just the same way. You can have any color handle that you like. I'm gonna do a brown handle to match the brown leather elements, leather accents. These suitcases, these big clunky ones are so cute. And I used to be a suitcase type traveler. And I still am when I'm taking road trips, staying at hotels. But when I'm on a flight, I'm a backpack kind of girl carry on. I just recently got a travel backpack and I checked out the weight difference in my original adorable suitcase is like, I want to say like 18 pounds. <laughs> so uh, carrying additional 18 pounds of not even your stuff. 
cute, but not the most functional probably. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add a handle now in that same light brown color, same way here and stack it right on top of the one above it. Start with the line, horizontal line. And two little connector lines. Same idea as the one before it. Not that much bigger of a handle because still it's a bigger suitcase, but it's still you know designed for a human hand. A little bit of gray on either side. So cute. I want to grab our smallest brush for these tiny little details. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. I'm going to go around my little silver buckles and around my handle with my black, same idea. Very cute, it's a fade, but it gets a little bit wonky sometimes. Kind of what makes it cute. Okay, with that same teeny tiny brush, I'm going to come in here and just add a little circle in the top triangular part of our silver buckles. So cute. All right, and I'm also going to use my teeny tiny brush to add a little bit of stitching detail. I'm going to be using white here. I'm going to have very small little lines and I want to leave room because I'm going to do a little outline of my brown too. I'm going to do just little stitching on either side like so. Very small little brush strokes. Leave a tiny bit of room. If you don't, we can just make the brown a little smaller and that's okay, but a little bit of space. Don't touch the brown with the white. Leave a little bit of blue in between. Okay, look at how cute that stitching looks. Okay. This is another little detail of my adorable suitcase. That looks very cute painted, but will never go abroad. <laughs> but will be rolled in at least to many a hotel lobby before its life is through. Okay, very cute. And then final little black outline details. I'm going to grab my larger brush just so that things go a little faster. Second to smallest detail brush. I'm gonna do a quick outline here of my buckles, locks. Super cute. And then a quick little clean outline there of that brown trim. And that should sort of finish off the details here. And then all we need to do is add our stickers onto this suitcase as well. Super cute. All right, and I am coming into the brown there a little bit, just again to leave some room. If I can, getting pretty close, but very small details. No, that's okay. Don't okay, kind of run out of space. It's that stitching detailing of the trim. 
Let me pull my black a little bit there into the gray. So let me touch that up real quick. And in fact, that could use a little bit of a highlight with that lighter gray anyway. And we also need a quick highlight in the handle. Just a lighter brown, same color, just a little lighter. If you need to, you can do any additional color in case you can see the background still. And then we're going to add some stickers to this one as well. And I'm going to block these out with white. I'm gonna do a big rectangular sticker over here. I'm just going to start with some countries that I've been wanting to visit. So this is gonna be the Irish flag. And then I'm going to do the Swiss flag, which is actually a square. But I'm going to have it overlap the top, similar to up here, as if we have a lot of stickers all over the suitcase. Okay, just with white for now, half of a square, which is going to show up as a rectangle or a triangle. So many shapes today. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna pop up back to the top here a little bit of yellow and a clean brush and I'm going to fill in this top white sticker with yellow because I'm going to do the New Mexican Zia symbol flag but you can do whatever stickers that you like on top of your white. I'm going to use my tiny detail brush again. This one's actually getting some good use today and I'm going to grab a little bit of a dark blue for my peace sign sticker. I'm just going to go around the outside here of this circle and add a quick peace sign. I'm all about a world where we are global citizens living in peace. painting and traveling. All right, and then moving down to my Swiss flag. I love mountains, like I said before. So even though I mentioned that I would love a beach vacay, I've always dreamed of going to the Alps. And I love the Swiss flag. The Swiss flag is essentially just a white plus sign. So I'm coming in here and I'm doing the red around the plus sign of white and I'm leaving in the middle with that white like so, right? Deceptively simple. Give it a try. Or add any other countries, stickers that you like. Let's do Ireland. We're going to need our orange here. For this third of the flag, getting that nice and filled in. Super cute. Using our imaginations as to where we want to travel. And then in Ireland, I've always wanted to go to a couple places, but especially the old like Celtic pagan sites like New Grinch. My family is largely Irish and we're from County Cork as per my DNA results. So perhaps I'll need to visit Cork while I'm there as well. I mixed up a grass green for the other side here of the Irish flag. with that yellow mixed in with my phthalo. We're just gonna fill those in with little rectangles. Super cute and easy and simple. This is a very clean yet 
cute look. I think I'm going to do a quick outline of black around my stickers as well, outlining everything. And these flags are finished down below here. And let's finish our New Mexico flag. I figured I needed one flag to remind me of my home, my current home. A West Coast raised girl in the mountains of New Mexico. New Mexico, we have this beautiful symbol, which is a Native American Pueblo symbol. Um, of the sun, some special symbolism. We're going to do a slightly simplified version. So I'm actually just going to take two little lines coming from the center of my sun. And I'm not going to see the top part of it. There's technically four lines in the Yuzia symbol, but it's so tiny that we're going to simplify it a little bit. Take our artistic liberty and I know what it symbolizes in my heart. And you guys can customize your own. If you are painting along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club that is specifically designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me uh, or just from your own imaginations. I'd love to see what you're painting. Uh, well, there's a link below in the description box to join. Let's grab our second to smallest detail brush for our final little details, which we're going to separate these two sections with a quick black line. And then we're also going to give our little suitcase stack some sort of sense of space with a dark brown, very dark brown, almost black. I'm going to do a couple little brush strokes coming from behind here, like there's a shadow here on our little floor, and then a little bit of shadow here at the base of our suitcase all around, like so, just with some horizontal lines. All right, that looks really cute. <laughs> all right, I like how that turned out and that looks like a lot like my original suitcase. That is all the instruction that I have for this, this week. Let me know what you thought of the painting in the comment section below. And until next week, 